I didn't really want to do this and make this video, but I believe ultimately the consequence to suppressing free speech and civil discourse and open communication ends up being net negative. And so YouTube have recently decided to starting to ban prominent anti-vaccine activists, not only banning their content, which they have done over 130,000 times on a variety of different videos on their platform that they deem as misinformation, but now actually removing entirely uh, someone's ability to communicate on their platform, which they have every right to do. It is their platform. That's a different conversation. However, it's the precedence that this sets that is questionable and poses a very important conversation. So, as part of a new set of policies aimed at cutting down on anti-vaccine content, YouTube will ban any video that claim that commonly used vaccines approved by health authorities are ineffective or dangerous. And if you want to kind of read their policy change, you can go to Managing Harmful Vaccine Content on YouTube. I think it's very important to, before you talk about these things, we just say, what are they saying? Okay, why is it important? Where, what merit does it have? You see, I hope I'm not naive, but I do believe that their intentions are generally coming from a good place. The pe there's people behind these platforms and they don't want to do harm. They don't want to provide a platform that could do more harm. So they want to try and minimize it. We're going to talk about why that is can end up being more problematic and causing more harm in the future. So basically, their main claim is specifically content that falsely alleges that approved vaccines are dangerous and cause chronic health effects, claims that vaccines do not reduce transmission or contraction of disease or contains misinformation on substances contained in vaccines will be removed. This would include content that falsely says that approved vaccines cause autism, cancer, or infertility, or that substances in vaccines contract those who receive them. Our policies not only cover specific routine immunizations for other vaccines as well, and diseases as well. The exception to this uh, is personal uh, testimony, uh, public discussion, debate on scientific process that will continue to allow new vaccine trials, historical vaccine success or failures. But channels who show a pattern of promoting vaccine hesitancy may be removed. So there's two main points to discuss here channels that show a pattern of promoting vaccine hesitancy and blocking and moving content that discusses how vaccines are dangerous and cause chronic health effects etc etc reducing transmission okay what we all probably agree on is that we want to find the closest thing to the truth. Okay, check. Well, what is medical consensus? Medical consensus is the totality of the current evidence and the average of the current evidence over a certain time period. For the coronavirus, 19, that's the last two years. Vaccine, about a year at recording. And so, we have to look in totality, where is the evidence pointing? I have done numerous, numerous videos, spent hundreds and hundreds of hours diving into research and, and dozens of hours making videos to discuss this. It's probably pretty more obvious where I may stand on the totality of all of this conversation, yet I still make this video because the only servant I am is a servant to truth. And I believe we should all be servants to truth. Truth that seeks objectivity and systematic logical sequencing of processes and methods to come to logical conclusions, aka the scientific method. Of course, this method may not be as flawed as the people behind them who, who employ this method and do research. There is always limitations. And so... What's problematic, one major problematic component to this is that it discourages the fact that all, all ideas shouldn't be put on the table. See, suppressing speech is no way to civil discourse and informational accuracy. It cultivates division and hostility. 
even if that information is incorrect. You see, information is just information. It is only until it is acted upon to which it has a consequence. And so what we're partly saying is, well, we're going to think for you. You're a bit too dumb and some people end up drinking the turpentine and overdosing on certain things. And so for those types of people, we need to make sure we got all our bases covered and we're going to protect you. We're going to protect people from misinformation and disinformation. Well, then there's the question of why do you get to be the organizational people that control that? Well, it's your platform. It's my platform. I can do what I want. Okay, fair enough. YouTube, Facebook, this and that. Private enterprises. That's that's a point. And so let's talk less about that and more about the precedent it sets philosophically and morally uh, and ethically. You see, when we suppress ideas, no matter what ideas they are, those ideas don't go away. Do you think people who believe vaccines don't work and, I don't know, will turn you green or will get you, make you sick or even infertile, do you think they will go away if you stop their ideas? In fact, they'll probably double down on them. They'll probably double down on them because you're, they're not being heard. They're actually not even, even being allowed to speak anymore. And so they will go into their own echo chambers, just like terrorists end up going further and further, uh, or people with um, very extremist ideological ideas uh, who are shunned by society end up going further and further into the corners, um, and into the caves, if you will, to find their own little echo chamber and tribe of people who believe that. And so we haven't actually addressed the problem. And that is the information, and the, the, the logic of the information. We've just said, you're wrong. Go over there. Sit in, the, sit in the naughty corner. You don't get to speak anymore. Okay, well, that's problematic for some reasons I just mentioned. But what if we did that more often? What if religions, ideologies, and general beliefs that were in conflict with medical consensus were blocked? Do we block ideas that purport obesity is healthy? Because this has come about. This is my industry. Like, this has come about. This is, I've heard this and we've seen this over the last few years. No, we don't. Those people are allowed to communicate and speak. But what we do instead is, even though that can be very harmful to people because obesity, uh, the effects obesity and its comorbidity uh, relations can have on quality of life, mortality, morbidity. We don't say, we don't block that. We say, we provide a gargantuan amount of evidence over the decades that we have to rebut this. Just like we could do with people who promote misinformation or disinformation on any topic, vaccines, the vi a virus, etc. You provide better information. You provide more sound, logical, high levels of evidence to rebut the argument or opinion being expressed. And but you could say maybe these ideas, the, the example I just gave about the obesity, yeah, that doesn't provide. Here's the I'll argue against myself. That actually doesn't provide as much as a threat. Nowhere near as much as a threat as, you know, vaccine misinformation. One is systemic, one is a bit more idiosyncratic. It just hasn't really like very different levels of um, influence these two examples have vaccines versus the idea of obesity being good for your health. So that's a good point. But what may, what may outweigh this point is now we're setting a precedent. We're setting a precedent for suppression of information, suppression of speech, that one shouldn't be allowed to challenge the consensus narrative. However, even though currently the data The hundreds of trials and, and, and pieces of evidence appear to point in the direction that possibly vaccines are more effective and safe than the coronavirus. Let's just, even if you disagree, that's cool. Let's just assume that's true for a second. What may outweigh... The, the, that consensus narrative may change. We may learn something later in the future or a bunch of new information that contradicts it. So what do we do? Do we just say, 
double down on our opinion and become even more dogmatic? Dogmatic? Or do we do our best to find the closest thing to the truth and say, we may have been wrong here, let's find out why? Well, a reasonable person hopefully would do that. So the problem is consensus narrative changes, medical consensus changes, it's subject to bias, self-interest like money, incompetence, or it just hasn't reached the full confidence in accurate truth yet. It doesn't matter what topic we're talking about. Uh, if we don't allow people to express their ideas that are in conflict with consensus narratives, we risk being wrong and causing more harm in the future due to our dogmatism. What if we were so dogmatic we allowed doctors to actually keep promoting tobacco and cigarettes for what? Throat remedies, for, for, for throat irritation. In, in the early 1900s, 30s and 40s, that cigarettes would be promoted. Now, it, again, it, it's not, I'm not saying, we're not trying to equate what is happening now with this example. We're simply giving an example of what's possible. That if, if we didn't allow ourselves to, to discuss these ideas and come out with better information, maybe we'd still believe that. Maybe that'd still be promoted. And so let's say, like, you know what? Maybe they should all be blocked. Maybe these ideas of misinformation, disinformation, you're on the side of YouTube and you're like, thank God, that should be happening. I'm so glad that's happening because it's really harming people. Okay? Potentially a problem with that is that it doesn't, this isn't going to end. Why would, why do you think this is going to end with the ideas that you just agree with or I just agree with? You see, we might be fine, you might be fine, now you're thinking, good, they should suppress it, they're wrong. Let's say they are. Let's say all this vaccine or much of this vaccine misinformation is overblown. Let's assume it is. Guess what? Eventually, it will impact you. It will impact me. Once the opposite side of the political spectrum, once the opposite side of the mainstream belief has flipped. And then, then what? Oh, then you're going to care. But it won't happen overnight because you didn't stand up for the ability to openly discuss ideas freely. And so in 5, 10, 50 years, it may swing around to you. And then you will care. And hindsight's a motherfucker. Hindsight's going to be like, damn, I should have said something. I should have stood up. I should have made that video, that post, expressed this idea. You know, I want to be wrong. Because if someone presents a more compelling argument and wants to talk about it, that's great. Let's find the closest thing to the truth. I have a podcast for this very purpose. It seems through science, to as being a scientist, that the only way to get to better ideas is through open platforms of dialogue and debate. And more of it, if you're afraid of the consequences of others speaking out, misinformation, disinformation, it's very simple, guys. Provide a more compelling argument. If you can't, well, hold on, maybe your argument wasn't that strong enough to begin with. Maybe then you should reevaluate it. If you can, then great. You can help impact people towards a better future towards a higher order, towards betterment. A lot of people are fearful, afraid of the vaccines. Some people are afraid of the, the coronavirus. Some people are afraid of both. I'm starting to think maybe we should be more afraid of this.